escalates pressure on the White House prompts a response. Sometimes it requires a, a, a tragic situations to help bring clarity in the international community. The latest on evacuations in Lebanon and how the president is linking the violence to Iraq. Good afternoon, I'm Maria Silva in for Suman Terrace today. We begin with a breaking story unfolding right now behind the Boulevard Mall. The first response team on the scene of a fight involving a Metro officer and a suspect. Our crews have learned the officer was injured in that fight after trying to pull over the suspect, we're told, in a stolen car. Yeah, that suspect in the car was fighting with the officers when he was tased. We'll continue to follow this developing story and pass along any new information as it becomes available. And right now, Coroner's Inquest is hearing a similar case that happened, which started also as a traffic stop and ended in a man's death. Yeah, the Coroner's Inquest is underway to find out if police uh, made the right call when they stunned Felipe Herrera with tasers last month. Herrera died shortly thereafter. News 3's Marie Mortera is live from the Regional Justice Center where the inquest is being held and Marie, police say they had no choice. Well, they say that Herrera wasn't an easy man to fight. He was 300 pounds, six feet tall, and when they responded to him, well, they he immediately started fighting, punching, and struggling with officers. One of those officers was Kenny Delzar, who had been with Metro for five years now, and he was out on regular patrol when he caught Herrera driving around with an expired license plate registration. He pulled Herrera over and immediately says Herrera started screaming profanities and started rocking his car. Well, Delzer asked Herrera to get out, but when he did, he started punching and fighting. Delzer says he tried to push Herrera away, tried to grab his arms to control him, but when he was hit in the throat, he knew he couldn't do it alone. Somebody is trying to kill you. That's what fighters do when they want to kill you, they hit you in the throat. Because it collapses your throat, you can't breathe, you die. So at that point, I realized the suspect has just made, you know, the actions to try to kill him right there. And that's when he decided to fire that taser. But even then, that wasn't enough. He said he prayed that it would work. Uh, arriving units then came over and they fired more tasers. Still, that wasn't enough. Herrera continued to struggle with them. And a medical examiner says he ultimately died from a cardiac arrest from a heart attack. Uh, apparently, Herrera had also been living with diabetes. He wasn't taking medication for that. And all of that, to with the struggle, led up to his death. Now, one thing that we learned this afternoon was that Herrera also was living with schizophrenia. And he wasn't taking medication for that either. Medical examiner says that that could have played a part in why he was acting so erratic that June night. Of course, we'll have another update for you here on News 3 at 4. This coroner's inquest is still underway, but things should be wrapping up later on this afternoon. Reporting live from the Regional Justice Center, Marie Mortero for News 3. We'll send it back to you in the studio. All right, Marie, appreciate that. As she just mentioned, the inquest is expected to wrap up today. At the end, of course, jurors will be asked to decide whether the actions of police were one of three things, justifiable, excusable, or criminal. And the process of a coroner's inquest has been a hot-button issue for over a week now. The ACLU and NAACP believe it should be changed, saying the hearings are one-sided. Yesterday, the police union fired back, explaining officers aren't the ones causing the shootings. We didn't put the knife to our kid's throat at the airport. We didn't stick a gun in the manager's ear of Mervyn's. We didn't beat up our ex-wife or our future wife or girlfriend and then show up at the Circle K with a gun in the back of our pants. And there have been 20 officer involved shootings so far this year. 11 of those have been fatal. Over the past 30 years, 135 of the officer involved cases that went to a coroner's inquest were found justifiable. Only one proved criminal. In today's Crime Tracker 3 alert, many of those once wanted by police are now behind bars. Over the past two days, Metro has arrested dozens of criminals in what they call Operation Nora Sweep. Their targets, people with outstanding warrants. The area, neighborhoods on the east side of the valley between Sahara and Flamingo. Nora is the name referred to that area by police officers. The charges ranged anywhere from traffic citations to violent felonies. A total of 80 people are now in custody. And Metro's vice unit says a home inside a local upscale golf course community was being used for a sex business. Officers busted a home-based brothel just west of the 215 near Flamingo in the southwest part of the valley Thursday morning, taking three women into custody. They arrested 47-year-old Joan Islis for pandering and trafficking cocaine. Police say she sold two undercover cops $200 worth of cocaine. 
and was charging customers $1,000. 22-year-old Marwa Maiwan and 44-year-old Nanette Stock were arrested for soliciting prostitution. Police say they were tipped off to the home inside the Siena Golf Course community after they noticed a lot of traffic in and out of that house. A murder investigation is underway after a man was killed at a hotel just off the strip. It happened at the budget suites near Industrial and Desert Inn. Police say the murder happened just before 1 a.m. on Wednesday. Someone called police reporting that a man had been assaulted at that complex. Officers found the 27-year-old victim inside a room. Police say the man was hit on the head. He later died from his injuries at the hospital. If you have any information about this case, call Crime Stoppers at 385-5555. Shooting inside a gated community sends one person to the hospital. This happened early this morning near Windmill and Paradise. Police are still trying to figure out just what exactly happened there. Two men we know were involved in a shootout. One man suffered non-life-threatening injuries. The other man remains on the run. A new judge will oversee the sentencing of a former NHP trooper who admitted to killing four people in a deadly crash. District Judge Joe Bonaventure removed himself from the Joshua Corcoran case yesterday. Prosecutors requested the move to avoid the appearance of bias. The lead prosecutor is married to Bonaventure's sister-in-law. Corcoran was fired in May from NHP after pleading guilty to reckless driving. Police say he was going 113 miles per hour when he slammed into the back of another car on I-15. Four people were killed. Another was seriously hurt. Corcoran will be sentenced next month. A man's body is recovered from Lake Mead. Metro's dive team found the 26-year-old Las Vegas local this morning in the same location he was last seen. Rangers say he was fishing with five friends on shore last night when three of them decided to go for a swim. Only two of them made it back. Rangers believe he drowned and they do not suspect any We want to show you some live pictures here. This is happening in Everman, Texas, uh, where there is a dollar store, we're told, on fire. We know that fire crews have been there uh, for about 10 minutes in there trying to uh, put this thing out. No injuries have been reported yet, but um, sounds of, uh, we're also told there have been some explosions there as well. So we'll keep an eye on this story. Again, a dollar store on fire, Everman, Texas right now. Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice heads to the Middle East on Sunday in hopes of reaching a Mideast peace deal. Rice will meet with Israeli and Palestinian leaders, then go on to Rome to meet with leaders from other countries. She says at this point there are no plans to send U.S. ground troops. New developments in Lebanon indicate the violence is about to escalate. People living in southern Lebanon are now being warned to evacuate, suggesting a large-scale Israeli ground attack is about to get underway. And Israeli troops did hit Lebanon with airstrikes this morning, hoping to defeat Hezbollah fighters still launching rockets into Israel. So far, 300 people in Lebanon and more than 30 in Israel have been killed. The vast majority have been civilians, many of them children. More than a half million people have been forced to leave Lebanon, including some 3,800 Americans evacuated with help from U.S. Marines. Many are still in bomb shelters trying to just wait it out. I am afraid I come with my family here because I am afraid from mom. No toilet, uh, no eat, uh, no sleeping, in the floor. Dirt, everything dirt here. Another 2,000 people are expected to evacuate today. And this is the 10th day of fighting in the Middle East. And as NBC's David Gregory shows us, the pressure is building on the Bush administration. The Middle East in flames from Iraq. <laughs> Lebanon. The region has reached a new boiling point. For the White House, another crisis in a corner of the world that has consumed a presidency. Sometimes it requires a, a, a tragic situations to help bring clarity in the international community. But it wasn't supposed to be this way. The president's foreign policy was designed to make the Middle East safer. It's not. And in Beirut, the anger is directed not just at Israel, but at the U.S. Crisis after crisis has undermined the Bush doctrine. Preemptive war in Iraq to set an example and perhaps open a new chapter of peace. A liberated Iraq can show the power of freedom to transform that vital region. The push for democracy to end violence. I believe democracies uh, don't war with each other. 
and diplomatic disengagement from the Arab-Israeli conflict in favor of a wait-and-see approach. Peace requires a new and different Palestinian leadership so that a Palestinian state can be born. A foreign policy that has yet to produce the promised results. Bush foreign policy is in tatters. Judge the Bush foreign policy by its own standard. It said it was going to deal with the axis of evil. In every case, each of those nations in question is more dangerous. Iraq on the brink of civil war. A rising Iran defying the world over nuclear weapons and flexing its muscles. And missile tests by North Korea in violation of diplomatic demands. Even the president's conservative allies say the world has become more unstable. Where, they now ask, is the president's nerve? We should be more aggressive in trying to make clear to Iran and Syria that their aggressive actions will have consequences. And this afternoon, President Bush is in Colorado. He left Andrews Air Force Base on Air Force One this morning. The president's agenda includes a Republican fundraiser in Denver. Protesters say they will also be on hand to see Mr. Bush. Mothers of U.S. soldiers are expected to speak out, hoping the president gets troops out of Iraq. Well, it's time for our first check on weather. And yesterday, a little gloomy. Today, the sun is out. Yeah, so I guess we're probably watching, John, to see what happens uh, with the clouds and the sky and all that stuff today again. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I'm going to see if we can get our Mandy cam swung all the way around in a different direction. We are seeing some cloud development down to the south, and we still do have some uh, weather advisories down in Southern California. These are flash flood advisories, or what watches rather. Yesterday, this entire area was in that green color. No flash flood watch for our immediate forecast area today, and much of the cloud cover we're seeing from our visible satellite is moving up to the north and to the west, but we are seeing a little bit of development over the Spring Mountain Range and a few, uh, just a few blips on the uh, visible satellite down to the south. In terms of our radar, not much going on right now. A uh, few echo returns down over near Barstow along I-15, and that is about it. Let's go ahead and take a look at our right now conditions. Now, as you take a look of note is the dew point temperature and the humidity, and we've got enough out there where we are going to start seeing some of these head thunderheads trying to get their act together throughout the afternoon and the evening. Talk about how long this might hang around, plus Burl and the Fredericks fact. It's all coming up. Right now, we'll send it back to Mr. Mitch and my Maria. Thank you so much. Well, a city close to home has something very important to offer. Yeah, more jobs are popping up on one side of town and they're gaining national attention for it. The suburban cities between 100,000 and 200,000, they're, they're what's growing fast. The reasons for more jobs in North Las Vegas and where the city ranks among other top cities for job growth. New homes are getting more expensive, what the latest numbers show and why it's not keeping people from buying. And a woman who admitted she killed her preacher husband could get out of jail. I would classify them as living on the edge financially. What her defense attorneys are saying about the couple's marriage and why she says she snapped. Next on News 3 at Noon. Homes may not be selling as fast, but they're still getting more expensive. Housing experts predict that trend is only going to continue. There are nearly 20,000 existing homes on the market, and with so many options, builders and homeowners are fighting to compete. While the price of existing homes has been leveling out in the valley, new homes kept appreciating over the past six months. According to the local real estate monitoring firm SalesTrack, the median price of a new home reached more than $337,000. That's in June. That's more than a 17% increase over last year when the price was just under 288,000. More than 3,500 new homes sold last month. That's up 1% from last year. But overall, in the past six months, more than 18,000 new homes have been sold, and that's an increase of more than 7% from last year. Some experts credit competitive builder incentives for that increase. One Queens Ridge place builds itself as the only vertical suburban custom home condominium project. Wow, that's a mouthful. Soon in its shadow will sit an equally ambitious development called the Village at Queens Ridge. Construction on the village is underway on 30 acres at Rampart Boulevard and Alta Drive. Shops, restaurants, and office space will make up a part of the 700,000 square feet of space, but it will also feature 340 condominiums in two five-story towers. 
When the village is complete, traffic will be directed to underground parking. One Queens Ridge place expects to have owners move in in June or July of 2007. The village will be completed in 2008. North Las Vegas ranks 13th among American cities with the highest percentage of job growth. It's part of a report by Money Magazine, which lists the best places to live. According to the magazine, jobs in North Las Vegas grew by more than 36 percent between the years 2000 and 2005. City records show more than 5,000 jobs were created during that time period. Uh, I think that that bodes well uh, for our economy and the city council's vision of making us an elite city uh, in the West and in the country. And Henderson also made the list at number 21 with a 33% growth in jobs. Mm, well, that's good news. Congratulations. To you that. know, in your car, the little uh, cup holder, mm. do you put your change in there? Or maybe the ashtray? I put I my do change my in there. I do my ashtray. Yeah, see, it kind of clutters up the car. Well, coming up, one lawmaker has a plan to change all that, why he wants to do away with pennies, and how the move could actually help his state. Where'd my penny go? Oh, there it is. We need our pennies. Hey, we need our headlines plus four prizes from our friends at the Tropicana on tap for a correct answer to the Frederick's Fact up next here on News 3 at noon. Our news comes first. Your weather first on three. Your own personal weather forecast for where you live and what you do 24 hours a day. Just go to KBBC.com. Click on the Your Weather First on Three icon. Fill out the information and start receiving your own customized emails. Plus, get the current temperature on your desktop. Your Weather First on Three. Sign up now. Your Weather First on Three, sponsored by Nevada Federal Credit Union. Get a second chance with a new start checking account. That's why Nevada Federal is your better alternative to banking. Welcome back. 1220 as we fly in your forecast. Just a heads up. Four gifts from our fabulous friends over at the uh, Tropicana, including tickets to see the Titanic Artifact Exhibition, tickets for the uh, legendary Follies Berger, the wonderful matinee show, The Magic of Dirk Arthur, and dinner over at the Island Buffet. All that for one correct answer. Visible satellite showing some cloud development off to the north and to the west, and we're seeing a little bit of stuff going on down to the south and also over the spring range. Let's check our right now conditions. 99 at Cody's Place over the hump in Pahrump. 100 right uh, now here at Las Vegas out of McCarran. 102 Mesquite. 101 for Beatty. 77 up in the mountain and 108 currently for the Laughlin Bullhead City Recreational Area. Let's go ahead and talk those headlines. Uh, this morning we had a quarter moon. I caught it about an uh, hour or so time lapse from our Black Mountain camera. Kind of cool if you're not up early enough to see this. I'd love to see these every morning when I come in. And it looks like now isolated storms. By the way, this was a time lapse from Dana yesterday afternoon, for also from the Black Mountain camera. Isolated storms both today and tomorrow. And we'll put in a chance on Sunday. And uh, yep, tomorrow is going to be your final chance. Uh, Mr. Monorail already has his very own Jorvinci Code uh, t-shirt to help local homeless pets. And you can pick yours up uh, tomorrow. Thank you, Mr. Monorail. Uh, at the uh, small all town dog vacation villas will be out there from uh, Jordo and me will be there uh, for uh, I'll be there Jordo and I will be there from 9 to 11 950 South Durango it'll be our last in-store event we'll still be able to get these online and again all the proceeds go to help local homeless pets 108 yesterday 105 is the average I think we're gonna hit that 108 again we've got uh, well, everybody except Lakes East uh, from our Wells Fargo weather Net network is all back in the uh, triple digit range another very hot day but look what's happening right here you get the sense that something's going on right there. Let's find out what it is. Yep, thunderstorm activity. In fact, uh, we're, that's the area we're going to hone in on in just a moment. This is the uh, what's left over a tropical storm burl heading up to Nor Nova Scotia and New Brunswick at this hour. But this is the area I want to kind of focus in on. We've had severe weather. Uh, watches and warnings. Look at that, right over the top of St. Louis, and now moving over to Paducah, Louisville, Cincinnati under the gun. We actually had a tornado watch uh, just outside of St. Louis earlier, about an hour ago, and I talked about this this morning, this general area, the potential for severe weather. We're also going to see the threat of some strong storms up in Northern California in Southern uh, Oregon, and did you see Portland? High temperature today expected, 100. Two. Let's fly in the next seven days and then give you a chance to win with the Fredericks Facts. So we're going to call for isolated storms, even though it's mostly sunny out there right now, and a chance on Sunday and pretty darn hot over the next several days. All right, four gift certificates from our friends of the Tropicana. Can you tell me, please, 
Famous park in Southern California is named for a silent film director. What park am I telling, uh, talking about? Also has a zoo in there. There's a hint for you. 6573425. That's it. We'll send it back over to Mitch and Maria. All right, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Well, with a couple of keystrokes on your computer, you can cut down on some of the hassle when going to buy a new car. Now, yeah, coming up, we'll show you what websites can help make the process a lot easier. That's next on News 3 at Noon, where news comes first. If you're in the market for a new car, we are watching out for you with some new internet websites that may help you. Capital One's DriveOne.com guarantees consumers a ceiling price, which is the highest price they would have to pay for a particular car before even walking into the dealership. AAA is also working on a similar feature on its website. We've developed relationships with dealerships where the dealerships guarantee the price of the car will always be below a certain level and the dealerships are incentivized to give the customer the, their upfront best price. Automotive entrepreneurs like Edmunds.com are also adding chat rooms to their websites to unite car buyers. So before you head to the dealership, make sure you have all the facts. To try out the websites that we've talked about here, just go to our website, kvbc.com. Once you get there, click on links. Even if you had a thousand of them, you'd only have 10 bucks. So are your pennies even worth counting? Well, Arizona Congressman Jim Colby doesn't think so. He's introduced legislation to get rid of pennies for good. In his plan, all transactions would be rounded to the nearest nickel. Getting rid of pennies could actually help Colby State by increasing the demand for nickels. Arizona is the nation's largest producer of copper. Despite its name, the nickel is named, made of copper and coated with nickel. The penny is coated with copper, but made mostly of zinc. Hmm. We'll have to see what happens with the old penny. Well, if you drive US 95, you already know this. There are some those ghost lanes that oh, just yeah. kind of all of a sudden you realize you're not in the right lane. Well, there are more of them coming up this weekend. Yeah, we'll tell you what freeway ramp is being affected so you can take an alternate route. That and so much more coming up on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. Stay with us. A jury will decide whether three police officers were justified in tasing a man so many times he later died from the shock. What officers are saying happened that day. And we will get to that story Maria just spoke of in a moment. But first, some breaking news. The Highway Patrol has now identified the semi-truck driver killed in that accident along I-15 yesterday near Russell Road. They identify him as 53-year-old Jimmy McLeod. And that accident happened at 1030 Wednesday night. The crash scene was so big it took crews more than 12 hours to clean it up. That cleanup effort made yesterday's morning commute a nightmare for many folks. Investigators say a deuce bus was heading north on I-15 when the tread separated from the left front tire that caused the bus to travel into the path of oncoming traffic hitting he hitting a semi head on a female passenger in the semi along with the deuce bus driver were taken to UMC both are still being treated for injuries and we also want to update you now on some breaking news we brought you at the top of the hour the first response team on the scene of a fight where a Metro officer has been injured uh, getting involved again with a scuffle with a suspect. This happened near the Boulevard Mall. That's near Twain and Maryland Parkway. It began when the officer tried to pull over a stolen car and the suspect, suspect became combative and was tased. This is a live picture from that area. Now again, Maryland Parkway and Twain. We're continuing to follow this developing story. As soon as we get any new information, including the uh, how the officer is doing, uh, we will pass that on. And we could find out by the end of the day too, if uh, Metro went too far after tasing a man who later died. That's a separate story from the pictures, but it also involves uh, a tasing. Taser. Yeah, exactly. Coroner's inquest is taking a closer look at Felipe Herrera's death. Last month, police pulled Herrera over for an expired license plate, but officers say he quickly started to get violent. When the responding officer says he was punched in the throat, that's when he knew his life was in danger. Somebody is trying to kill you. That's what fighters do when they want to kill you, they hit you in the throat. Because it collapses your throat, you can't breathe, you die. So at that point, I realized the suspect has just made, you know, the actions to try to kill me right there. 
And that police officer says that's when he stunned Herrera with a taser. Two other officers arrived and stunned Herrera as well. A medical examiner says Herrera ultimately died from a heart attack because of that struggle. It will be up to jurors to decide if the officer's actions were justifiable, excusable, or criminal. And the process of the coroner's inquest, that's been a hot-button issue for weeks now. The ACLU and the NAACP believe that inquest should be changed, saying the hearings are one-sided. Yesterday, the police officers union fired back, explaining officers aren't the ones causing these shootings. We didn't put the knife to our kid's throat at the airport. We didn't stick a gun in the manager's ear of Mervyn's. We didn't beat up our ex-wife or our future wife or girlfriend and then show up at the Circle K with a gun in the back of our pants. Metro has been involved in 20 officer-involved shootings this year. 11 of those have been fatal. Over the past 30 years, 135 of the officer-involved cases that went to an inquest were found justifiable. Only one proved criminal. Metro's vice unit says a home in a local upscale golf community was just a front for a sex business. Three women were taken into custody inside a home located just west of the 215 near Flamingo on Thursday. Officers arrested 47-year-old Joan Yeslis for pandering and trafficking cocaine. Police say she sold two undercover cops $200 worth of cocaine and was charging customers $1,000 per girl. 22-year-old Marwa Maywan and 44-year-old Nanette Stock were arrested for soliciting prostitution. A new judge will now oversee the sentencing of a former trooper with the Nevada Highway Patrol who admitted to killing four people in a deadly crash. District Judge Joe Bonaventure removed himself from the Joshua Corcoran case yesterday at the prosecution's request to avoid any bias. The lead prosecutor is married to Bonaventure's sister-in-law. Corcoran was fired from NHP in May after pleading guilty to reckless driving. Police say he was speeding at 113 miles per hour when he slammed into the back of another car on I-15, killing four people and seriously injuring another. He'll be sentenced next month. As many as 80 people with outstanding warrants are off the streets and behind bars thanks to a police sweep known as Operation Nora. The roundup took place over the last couple of days. Those arrested face charges that range from traffic warrants to, in some cases, violent felonies. Nora is what police call the neighborhood between Sahara and Flamingo on the east side of town, which was the target of their fugitive sweep. A man was rushed to the hospital early this morning after he was shot in the back. That shooting happened around 3 this morning in a gated community near Windmill and Paradise. Police are still trying to figure out exactly what happened, but it appears the man was shot during a shootout with another person. That other person has not been located. As for the victim who was shot, his injuries are not life-threatening. Metro officers investigating a murder at a budget suite. The budget suites we're talking about is near Desert Inn and Industrial. Police say early Wednesday morning, someone called police reporting that a man had been assaulted at that complex. Officers found a 27-year-old man inside the room, and those investigators say that he was hit on the head by someone inside the same apartment. He later died from his injuries at the hospital. A freeway ramp to US-95 is going to be moved over the weekend. The entrance from Rainbow to 95 South is going to close on Sunday night. That's so it can be moved just a few dozen yards to the south. The new lane hugs the sound wall until joining the freeway near Torrey Pines. Moving the ramp allows NDOT to add travel lanes where the old entrance is for now. The barriers should be gone by 5 o'clock Monday morning, so just over the weekend. Completion of the widening project is set for late next year. A judge could issue a ruling today that would let a Tennessee woman charged with killing her husband go free on bond. As NBC's Michelle Kaczynski tells us, her attorney says she has a very good defense for what she did. What would drive the preacher's wife to shoot him in the back while he slept? Ending a 10-year marriage, a family with three young daughters that seemed perfect. Mary Winkler has told police the tension stemmed from serious money problems that made her minister husband, Matthew, extremely irritable. Police read her statement in court. He had really been on me, like criticizing me for things, the way I walk, why I eat, everything. I was just tired of it. I guess I just got to a point and snapped. 
I would classify them as living on the edge financially. Winkler's attorney says the couple had just fallen prey to a common sweepstakes scam. He says it was the kind of scam you may have seen yourself on the internet, telling you you've won money, but first you have to send money to cover expenses. Then your so-called winning check bounces. Prosecutors say Mrs. Winkler had just deposited three bad checks from Nigeria and Canada, totaling around $17,000. Her attorney says money was just one issue in a marriage that was not what it appeared to be. If you are a pastor's wife, uh, you're under a microscope. Uh, you're expected to be solid. You're expected to have some, if not all, of the answers. And you're expected to be there for others. The question is, who is there for you? Now she's under the microscope and the camera in a case that has split this tiny Tennessee community with the church in the middle. It's murder. She still has a lot of support. We don't know what she's went through, and uh, he's not here to tell his side of the story. Only the day before this tragedy at a local elementary school, Mary Winkler had started a job substitute teaching, a move that could have set this family on a better financial course had it not veered off like this. And that was Michelle Kaczynski reporting for us. Winkler's murder trial is set for late over. Well, remembering to take birth control pills is a problem for some women. But there are plenty of new options out there. Some will even give you fewer periods a year. That's ahead in our Healthline 3 report. Make your birthday extra special this year. Sign up for the Channel 3 Birthday Club. Then watch your mailbox as you'll receive a free signature petite cake from Cold Stone Creamery. And you may even see a birthday wish to you during News 3 at sunrise. Get in on the fun by signing up at any Cold Stone Creamery today. Celebrate your birthday the smooth and creamy way. Become a member of the Channel 3 Birthday Club and make this your happiest birthday of all. What you need to get, let's start over. What you, what you need to do to get the things you're looking for. It's Friday and this is Dr. Phil's tip of the day. Okay, I want you to really listen up today because I wanna to talk to you about how to get Where's what you room? really want phone? in your life. It's not easy it to really achieve cool. things that are out there. If you already had them, if you could reach them, then it wouldn't be so enticing to you. Number one, you need to be sure that you know what it is you want. Don't go through your life as an unguided missile. Number two, you need to think really hard about what the cost is of what it is you say you want. Nothing comes without a sacrifice somewhere else. You need to be real careful what you ask for. If you're in a relationship, understand that that's a partnership. And partnerships are based on collaboration and cooperation. You've got to recognize that it's no longer just your point of view. And negotiate when you're in a relationship in a win-win way. Get the other person as much of what they want as you possibly can, and you'll wind up with what you want. And you can see Dr. Phil every Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock right here on Channel 3. Well, it's an embarrassing topic, but we have to talk about it. Bad breath. And joining me today is Dr. Harold Katz, who's also known as a Bad Breath Guru. Correct, thanks yes. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. Now, you have some great products here that can actually help people. Yes, uh, they're called TheraBreath. Uh, we actually developed them back in 1993. My own daughter had a problem with bad breath, and I'm a dentist, I have a degree in bacteriology, and we tried everything that was in the marketplace, the nuclear strength mouthwashes and the, the strips that blow off the top of your head. But what we realized at the root core of bad breath are bacteria which produce sulfur compounds. By introducing oxygen, which is the patented ingredient in the TheraBreath formulas, you can get rid of bad breath 24-7. Where can people get these products? Oh, they can buy them at Walmart, Walgreens, CVS. Uh, in fact, uh, what we want to do for your listeners, because August 6th is National Fresh Breath Day. We want to give out free samples of our product. So we have a whole bunch of free samples here along with a book. They can call the toll-free number 800-97-FRESH, 97-F-R-E-S-H, -E uh, press zero when you ask and just say you saw me on TV in Vegas or go to freshbreath.com and type in V-E-G-A-S, Vegas, 
and you get plenty of free samples and everyone will smell great. And when we're done here, we're giving away one of these little uh, great oh, sample excellent. kits sure. to one of our viewers. Very good. And then you're also doing something here. This is yes. a breathalyzer. This is a machine test. we use in our clinics. It's called a helimeter and it measures the amount of sulfur that's in your breath. So you've and offered very nicely. <laughs> and I did not take any breath mints, let me just tell you. Yes, I had no. lunch about an hour ago, had coffee and salsa, so here we go. So anything above 75 means you're not doing too good. Open mouth real wide, stick your tongue out. Oh, you're good. Yes! 30, <laughs> whoa! That's, well, I was worried there. I'm thinking you have maybe the best that's... news breath in America. I'm glad to hear that, and I didn't take anything for it. There right, you now go. I'm going to show you what happens with an onion. Okay. I'll stay away. I'll move this way. <laughs> I'm chewing on an onion. And people eat onions every day. They may have it in their uh, omelet or they may have it in a sandwich. Your breath goes to. Let's see what that is. Wow. Woo. Where are we? 349, you? you're up to. Yeah, wow. anything above 75 is bad breath. So by even eating a little bit of onion, now what we have is our third breath formulas. We even have breath strips now. Oh, and these are great. Those are just like the, yeah. But they don't. They taste good. They don't. Hey, you want to take but them? I was going to say that I was going to. Yeah, they don't taste like the other. Product, but these are probably better. Okay. No, by trying it. this. Wow, you're down at 38. From 400 down to 38. So the oxygen is oxygen is what really grabs onto the bad breath molecule and converts it. Dr. Yeah. Harold Katz, thank you so much for being with us. As we mentioned, oh, sure. we're giving away a sample product. Oh, great. Caller number one, the number you're going to see right there on your screen, 657-3425. And these do taste great. Yeah, they're good. Yeah. You thank smell great. Well, thank you. Thanks for joining <laughs> us. Back to you, Mitch. All right. Thanks. I can smell the onion still over here. Okay. Some new birth control is now making that time of the month a lot easier for women to bear. That's coming up on News 3 at noon. The new choice that will give women uh, fewer menstrual cycles. If you're interested in a position at KVBC-TV Channel 3, call 657-5488 or log on to kvbc.com. Welcome back. Mm, minty fresh. Ah, thank goodness we don't have smell vision Hey, let's go ahead and get you your forecast. We'll get you all the way through the next seven days and the answer and the winner of the Fredericks Fact. Today, 108, I think we're going to get there. We're already sitting smack dab on the century mark out of McCarran. And don't rule out these isolated storms trying to get uh, rolling on in uh, later on this afternoon. It's just taking a little longer today. Now we're seeing storm developing up in Utah, also in California. And uh, don't be surprised if Dana talks about severe storms in parts of northern California, even northern parts of the Silver State and uh, southern Oregon. We've got a real uh, interesting, yeah, well, dangerous situation, we'll call it, up to the north and west of us. Two out of three ain't bad with our air quality. Let's uh, quickly tell you, uh, well, we still have one lone holdout with our Wells Fargo WeatherNet network of data. Get you up to date. Talked about these storms. Look at how that cold air forcing its way down drops those temperatures. You go from 103 in Oak City to 73 KC, 90 DC, 98 Lake, 88 in Portland. Don't know if they're going to make that predicted high of 102. And yes, what's left of Burl, tropical storm, is really wreaking havoc with airport delays all across the northeast of New England and even back over to Chicago, that, those strong thunderstorms. So uh, I've got family and friends. There is, uh, there it is, Burl is racing, Burl rather, over Nova Scotia by this afternoon. And the wind speed starting to drop down. Early this morning, winds were still at about 60 miles per hour. So as it races up to the Canadian Maritimes, much colder uh, water, cooler water temperatures, not favorable for tropical development. 90 Tonopah, 97 Sacto, 79 in San Diego, 82 in San Francisco. It's pretty warm. Look at the dew point temperatures. Sacramento, 65, 60 in Fresno. This is what I was talking about. We could have some strong storms up here, and we can't rule them out right here as well. We still have that monsoon moisture in place. High pressure drifting a little farther to the north. And uh, it looks like the threat of storms will continue through tomorrow and will continue with a chance on Sunday. So that's pretty much about it. Let's get you through the next seven days, and we'll get you the answer in the winner of the Fredericks Fact. Here we go. So uh, it's going to be hot over the next several days. It's still going to be a bit on the sticky side, at least through Sunday. And then it looks like we'll just call it partly cloudy after that. Hey, congratulations to Robert Evangelisvi. Evangelisvi. Sorry, I hope... I hope I got that right, Roger, Robert. I'm sorry if I butchered your name. Yeah, it was legendary silent film director D.W. Griffith is, has the park named after him. Probably best known for uh, Birth of a Nation. Uh, 
passes for the Follies, Bears Air, the Magic of Dirk Arthur, Titanic Artifact Exposition, and Island Buffet, all at the Tropicana. That's it from here. we got to get ready to eat with Wolfgang Puck, right, Maria? Yep, but before that, we have another story. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Thanks, John, for that. Well, birth control pills have been around for 40 years, and not much has changed. But in today's Healthline 3, some new options are making their way onto the market. Traditional pills are 21 days of hormone and 7 days of placebo. But now many pills give a woman hormones throughout. That stabilizes hormone levels, making periods more manageable. The recently approved Seasonique offers a low dose of estrogen throughout the cycle. Another option, Seasonal, gives a woman three months of active pills, meaning a woman will get just four periods a year. A woman could have as many or as few periods as she chooses. It's completely safe for her body. It's completely safe for her uterus. And oral contraceptive isn't for everyone. Doctors say smokers and those with serious medical problems should not take birth control pills. Well, it is Friday, as was mentioned earlier, and that means uh, we've got a chef from Wolfgang Puck. We've got Dustin Lewandowski. Our friend will show you what kind of fish he's cooking up and how you can get the recipe to make it at home. That's coming up next on News 3 at Noon, where news comes first. Stay with us. He's certified by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and he's an explosives expert. Best partner. Best partner you can have. The Crime Tracker 3 team shows you how this chocolate lab is keeping us safe. Tonight at 11, News 3, watching out for you. Here are some of the stories we're working on for First News 3 at 4. A controversial political cartoon has many parents angry. What group the cartoon targets and why parents feel that the cartoon has gone too far. Also, we're digging deeper into the Nevada power rate increase. What the court ruling could mean for your summer cooling bills. That's coming up right after Dr. Phil on First News 3 at 4. Well, it is Friday, so we've got Dustin Lewandowski. Did I say yes, that right? Absolutely. Uh, executive chef over at the Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, which is inside the MGM. Correct. Uh, you're making a little uh, little grilled salmon today. Yes, I uh, took the liberty of grilling it before I came to spare you guys. So, uh, uh, the... so we're going to make some grilled salmon with uh, cool cucumbers and warm fingerling potatoes. Okay, so, and they're called fingerlings because they're... they're they look like little chubby fingers. Okay. So they're, they're in the shape. They're long and, and skinny. All and right. uh, we blanch those. Uh, till al dente, and then we cool them and peel them, slice them like this, right. and then marinate them in champagne vinegar and uh, red onions overnight. So wow. it, it help absorb. And then we're just going to warm them up in a little chicken stock and butter. Okay, wonderful. So, now this is like a little dressing that you're making here? Yeah, we're going to dress the cucumbers, and, and it's going to have two components, a warm, uh, warm potatoes, warm salmon, and then a cool salad. So nice. It's great, good for summer. Nice. And of course, so. folks, you can get the recipe by going to kvbc.com. And once you get there, click on entertainment. You'll see the little link there for recipes. The dressing's very refreshing. We'll start with a little yogurt, mm -hmm. equal parts yogurt and creme fraiche. You can use sour cream. If, if you uh, don't have creme fraiche. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. And we will add just a little bit of lemon juice to that. For a little zing. And we'll take some lemons and uh, our zester oh, here. Oh, zest. Make a little zest. Always helps freshen it up. There we go. And season, of course, with uh, salt, pepper, and Did you a little just sugar. use two kinds of salt? Oh, no. Sugar. That's sugar. That'll salt. help offset okay. the, the acidity of the lemon juice. Okay. We'll then add some red onions to that. And that some dill? fresh picked dill. Dill. And we'll mix that up. Okay. And of course, uh, if you haven't been to the Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill, it is inside the MGM Grand. And you, um, I know you said you've got a you've got a new uh, fish of the day. Yeah, we put a, a handful of new menus on the item, on the menu for summer. So for summer, kind just of kind of lighten it up a little bit. This is okay. one of them. Uh, we also put a new short rib on the menu, a uh, new fish of the day with a summer squash ragu and corn puree. Okay. So now that we got the dressing made. We'll add the cucumbers to that. And you can make all this ahead of time and kind of let them marinate. We got less than 30 seconds, Great. Justin. So we'll take. Uh, Easy to plate. We'll take our warm sure. uh, fingerlings. Our warm fingerling potatoes. Right. And just create a little bed in the center of the plate. Okay. And we will place our salmon right on there. Directly nice. on the side of that. And then we Look will at the cucumbers go on top. We'll just spoon over on the other side. Nice. Then. Folks, you gotta check this out. The grilled salmon at the Wolfgang Puck Bar and Grill inside the MGM Grand.